Hi there. Chances are, most of us played with magnets at some point during our childhood. There's something mysteriously powerful about them. Magnets can detect and attract each other from a distance, or spin and push away on a tabletop without even touching. I was so fascinated with magnets as a kid that I secretly broke a few of my dad's devices just to get my hands on those precious magnetic pieces. Only later did I realize that the cost of those devices could have bought me dozens of magnets. I felt pretty dumb back then. But hey, it was worth it for the fun. But have you ever wondered how magnets actually work? Why can they attract things like iron? Maybe you've heard that they have something called magnetism. But what does that really mean? Don't worry, just spend five minutes with this video and I promise you'll come away knowing a whole lot more. Let's dive in. To understand magnets, we have to go back to the basics. The atom. As you may know, atoms contain smaller particles called electrons. These electrons orbit the nucleus of the atom, similar to how the Earth revolves around the Sun. At the same time, each electron also spins on its own axis. Because electrons carry electric charge and spin, they generate a tiny magnetic field. This is where magnetism starts. Although the field from a single electron is minuscule, each atom contains many electrons, and every object around us is made up of an unimaginably large number of atoms. For example, one kilogram of iron, something you can easily hold in your hand, contains about 1.08 times 10 to the 25 iron atoms. Each iron atom has 26 electrons, so that's roughly 280 quadrillion quadrillion electrons in just one kilogram. With so many electrons, if their tiny magnetic fields line up and combine, the total magnetic force can be incredibly strong. That's why a magnet no bigger than your palm can lift a heavy steel door. Still, if every electron spins and produces magnetism, why do only some materials like iron, nickel, and cobalt become magnets? while others like gold, aluminum, or silver don't. The answer lies in how the electrons are arranged within each atom, and how those atoms are arranged within the material. In many materials, the directions of the electron spins cancel each other out, resulting in no net magnetism. But in magnetic materials like iron, the atomic structure allows the electron's tiny magnetic fields to align in the same direction. When they do, their magnetic forces combine creating a much stronger unified magnetic field. That's what a magnet is, a collection of atoms whose electrons' magnetic forces are aligned. A magnet has two poles and generates a magnetic field around it. When two magnets are brought close together, like poles repel and opposite poles attract, our planet Earth is also a giant magnet, which is why we can use compasses to determine direction. Now, let's go back to iron. Under normal conditions, the magnetic fields of its atoms are weak and randomly oriented, so they cancel each other out and the material isn't magnetic. But when you place a piece of iron near a strong magnetic field, like that of a magnet, it can force the atoms in the iron to align in the same direction. This alignment causes the individual magnetic fields to combine and become strong enough for the iron to be attracted to the magnet. This phenomenon is called magnetic induction or magnetization. In contrast, elements like gold and aluminum have very weak magnetic fields, and their atoms don't easily align with external magnetic fields. That's why they aren't attracted to magnets. Finally, if you heat a magnet to a high enough temperature, its atoms start moving chaotically, breaking their magnetic alignment. As a result, the magnet loses its magnetism and can no longer attract iron. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.